Ladies and gentlemen, for tuning in to week six of the Ukatsu High School Esports League brought to you by Columbia College. My name is Joe. With me is my co-caster, Ben Brooks. How are you feeling today for this matchup? I'm pretty exciting. This is the last week of the second round robin, week six. So, of course, in this nine-week season, we have three round robins total. And rounding out this week, we're really going to start seeing what the stains are going to look like coming into, I guess, the playoff picture. That, that's the biggest thing coming in, I guess. Uh, rosters are, I guess... Standings are really, really close uh, when you start taking into account uh, like the B teams. Specifically, we're going to talk about it more uh, when Rockbridge and Jefferson City jump into their champion selects here. Uh, but a lot of these games are really, really on the line here for when they're trying to decide uh, what their seeding is going to be like come, out, come playoffs in yeah. a couple of weeks. Yeah, absolutely. And just to take a step back, if you do not know what the Yukatsu High School Esports League is, this is the nation's first live LAN nine-week season for youth esports. That means we have two teams here tonight at Yukatsu HQ in our studio playing head-to-head -head jerseys will be on their way parents are in the stands club sponsors are also here but it's going to be a fantastic night of esports as we jump into champion select all right, like we said before, though, uh, this is the Rockbridge versus Jefferson City. Rounding out, of course, the last, uh, I guess the second round, Robin, I mean. These are the B-team rosters. Rockbridge High School is currently on the left side, the blue side. Uh, they're considered the home team for tonight. Oh, yes. Jefferson City coming all the way from Jefferson City. That's a 30, 45-minute drive. Oh, yeah. Uh, they're all the way here, and they'll be on the red side, the right side of the map here. And, of course... We're talking about picks and bans here. They're banning away the champions they don't want to play against, whether they're comfort picks on the other side of the tip of the ball, or maybe they're just picks they're just not comfortable playing into. And then they pick the champions that they want to play. Like we said earlier, there are over 140 characters for these players to pick through. And here we have our first six bands that would be Tarek, Zach, and Jinx for uh, the Rockbridge bands, and Kaisa, Blitzcrank, and Aurelia for Jefferson City. Meanwhile, we've got our two first picks. What do you think about yep. those picks, Ben? Uh, interesting enough for Lee Tolnier for Frozen Maelstrom, the team captain and the top laner for Rockbridge. On the left side, he's picking Urgot. I'm assuming that's probably going to go uh, top side of the map. He didn't elect to go for his Darius, a very comfortable pick that he's performed very well on mm -hmm. week in and week out. On the other side of the ball, though, we have uh, Eli McVay, Wolfram812, picking his Alawi. He did very, very well last week with that pick. Oh, he practically carried their B-team roster win damage uh, when it came down to the line uh, last week. So very excited to watch that one more time. Meanwhile, for the jungle pick on Jefferson City, Dragon the God picks Olaf, the uh, axe-slowing, wielding champion. Uh, very good pick for kiting in this case. Uh, we'll see if that comes into play. Meanwhile, Jarvan the Fourth goes towards Rockbridge High School. Jarvan, a very consistent, very uh, impactful character in this whole entire high school esports season, wouldn't you think? Yeah, very, very uh, impactful. And again, Jordan, uh, not a pick that I expected him to play. I, he's played a lot more Warwick, some Jax. Uh, J4, though, again, very meta, a uh, very prominent pick in the last couple of uh, games. Last couple weeks, actually, so exciting team on that. And we see Tristan Mini Reed uh, back on his Malzahar pick. Last week, he opted for a Kestin pick. Uh, got kind of shut down there, though, so Malzahar, more of a comfort pick for him. Has a lot more wave clear. Talked about that a lot last week, and probably a little pivot there by the team. Absolutely. Interesting Karthus pick for Silver Silver Eagle 99. That would be Jarek Kimball, the mid laner for Jefferson City High School. Uh, we haven't seen too much Karthus play recently, but that's going to... Sure to make a lot of cleanup kills. Meanwhile, though, Darius ban, maybe a missed ban after uh, Rockbridge had already picked their top laner. Mm, I, I'm not really sure what the assumption there was. Maybe Urgot, they thought Urgot was going to go AD carry. Uh, again, though, we got to do point out, though, that uh, these bans are actually not in order. We got to take into account they did do pro draft, so they aren't picking exactly in order. So probably take into account, actually, that they banned Darius earlier on, and that's why they had to opt for the Urgot pick. Because, of course, we opt to do pro draft to help uh, compensate for some of the players' lack of champions. We don't want you know, coaches targeting different players because they can't, you know, but they don't know, they don't know the yeah, champion. Yeah, <laughs> now this uh, pro draft allows us to select any champion in any order uh, that the uh, the players themselves do have, eliminating any confusion or any uh, barriers to entry when it comes to the draft phase. Mm -hmm. Both teams locked in. Alawi, Olaf, Karthus, Lucian, Morgana for Jefferson City. Meanwhile, Urgot, Jarvan the Fourth, Malzahar, Caitlin, and Nami for Rockbridge. Very strong team compositions, in my opinion. What do you uh, What do you make of this? I very much so like 
Rockbridge's composition uh, better in, in this case uh, specifically. Uh, you look at, like we talk about Wave Clear a lot, they've got that, they have engage, they have damage. You look, look in the bot lane specifically, Lucian not being a very meta pick. And when I think of a counter to Lucian specifically, Caitlyn does a really good job uh, into Turtle, who is playing Lucian in the bot lane. So I, I think. Uh, Rockbridge B's bot lane is really what they want to play through, and they've done very, very well the last couple of weeks. Uh, Riley Rilo doing very, very well on Jinx specifically. She's pretty much carried a lot of her teams in terms of damage uh, for what those picks have meant. So I like the Caitlyn pick here very well into the bot lane, and Lucian doesn't scale very well either. So on the on the other hand, though, I I actually pretty I'm, I'm pretty favored for the Jefferson City team composition. I really like their team fighting potential. Karthus, even if he dies, can still deliver mm -hmm. a lot of damage post death. Meanwhile, if J Jarvan the Fourth from uh, Rockbridge, that would be uh, Jordan Taylor playing the jungle position. If he ults into the wrong position. Uh, the enemy top laner for Jefferson City, Eli, he could just lay down an, a massive ultimate and and turn the tide completely in the other person's favor, uh, or, or in Jefferson City's favor, I should say. Yeah, very true, very true. And I think last week we saw just that bullied uh, Leah fair amount got pretty far ahead actually uh, in terms of damage. He was he was, he was a pretty big boy. Uh, <laughs> oh yes. And We'll see again, though, uh, how well he does this game around. It's going to kind of be about the team fighting. Last last week, though, uh, we saw they were actually into they were into battle, I believe. Correct? Yes, yes battle. Nice. They uh, Jefferson City to play battle last week, and I believe they had a different kind of a newer top laner, and they picked a lot of different fights that weren't really favorable in terms of uh, what they want to do against Malawi. Malawi, she, her ultimate kind of thrashes all these tentacles down in an area, and it deals massive damage and allows her to heal. And it seemed like Battle wanted to keep forcing those team fights, and we see maybe if Jeff, or Rockbridge has a little bit of an answer uh, to kind of counter that this time around. For sure, and that's one of the beautiful things when it comes to competitive esports, as opposed to playing on your own. This high school esports league has brought out the best of them in terms of teamwork. It's not just mechanical individual skill. These are five players, each picking their own uh, respective champions to synergize with their teammates. We need to go in at this time because we have this advantage right at this moment. The instant that that is communicated between the team members, that's when they can capitalize and push for the win. That's what we're looking for in these team fights uh, because both sides have picked uh, a decent amount of wave clear this week, which I'm pretty happy to see. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the probably best part about that too is like you said, these players are all in game together. They have to strategize and it's about high school sports specifically. Uh, these guys are all making the decisions uh, together. They're communicating. There's no coach telling them play by play. Hey, we're going to execute this play right now. There's no break. They're in the action for the entire time. And that's the coolest part about this high school esports league. Brought to you guys by Columbia College, Armstrong Teasdale, Veterans United, and Hawthorne Bank. We're also very excited to announce that potentially coming next year, we might have a, a An whole other exactly. Overwatch very League coming to, to uh, Columbia Public Schools and potentially Jefferson City Public Schools. We know a lot of you guys out there uh, don't only play League of Legends, so you will have a chance to play Tracer and Genji and Hanzo. Uh, hopefully not just those camp champions. you got to play some tanks and healers. Uh, we mentioned earlier that there is no coach play-by-play, -play, but there are two coaches uh, here tonight for each respective high school. For Rockbridge, we have Joshua Cobb, the uh, mid laner, also for Team Mizzou. Is that correct? Yeah, correct. Yeah. yeah and Joshua then, of course, Cobb. for Jefferson City, we have Coach Evan Rowland, who is uh, very, very kind in, in making that trip every single week. 45-minute uh, drive one way, 45-minute drive the other way back, uh, just to meet live with his team. He has done a tremendous uh, amount of traveling and, of course, uh, effort on behalf of the Yukatsu High School League, mm -hmm. Esports League. Yeah, so without further ado, we've actually just finished up the spectator delay, and we're about to jump in-game right now. Biggest thing that i got to talk about for this game when we're really getting down to it is... Jefferson City picked up their first win of the season last week. Their B team, they're now sitting at a 1-4 and four record. They took down Battle, who was uh, actually seated at the top. They were actually leading the standings uh, for the B team games, and they took them down in a very, very close, very, very kind of bloody finish, yeah, honestly. Securing their first fighting. win of the yeah. season, that is. That's a huge mark for them. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we have plenty of sponsors, family members, and team players tonight. Let's hear it for both teams, everyone. Who's rooting for Jefferson City High School? And of course, let's not forget our quote unquote home team tonight, Rockbridge High School. Let's see here some representation for those guys. There we go, there we go. All right, and again though, this puts Jefferson City in a position to start climbing in these standings. It is not sure. too late for them to end with a positive record. They're only one game behind Rockbridge B. 
And if, if they win tonight, uh, they're going to be tied, and they have a chance to actually break into uh, into the top three, top yes. two, potentially and, even. And at the same time, we do want to make it clear that B teams will be able to compete for championship glory against even A teams as we approach playoffs. Uh, it's going to be very exciting to see maybe a potential B team sneaking its way in into the power rankings and, and taking it all if it's if they really work hard. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see for sure. We do, I think, I don't know how many teams actually do it, but I would like to see more A teams maybe scrimming against their B teams, you know, especially giving them a little bit more practice against yeah. tougher opponents. Very anyway, they'll get back into it, though. And we'd like to highlight exactly who is who when we talk about this game, especially specifically for you parents or teachers out there who really don't know what the characters in League of Legends are. There are very, very many characters. But in the top lane for Rockbridge B, we have their team captain, Lee Tolnier, Frozen Maelstrom, playing Urgot, the crab-like six-legged shotgun six knees yeah. <laughs> a, <laughs> a crab with shotgun knees you know back in the jungle position for rockford to be as well we have jordan taylor jt plays three again very meta pick the driver in the fourth big spear wielding character Warrior, yes. a lot of engage very very meta at the moment as well back in the mid lane we have tristan reed played by mini playing malzahar uh, more of a mage has a lot of wave clear has a lot of ability to lock down different champions a pick that he's been very comfortable on before so see how well he does into this uh, unorthodox kind of oh, yes. this pick of course run out the bot lane for rockbridge b we have riley and dawson riley olinger and dawson Kroom, i believe yep. rilo and dasso playing caitlin uh, the sniper wielding lady over here and of course nami the mermaid. Bubble mermaid. Marble. <laughs> yeah, they, we know these two have a lot of different types of, synergy. of champions in uh, League of Legends, if you didn't already notice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very exciting. Uh, I think it's going to be the lane to watch, though, when we're talking about win conditions for Rockbridge High School. Now in the top lane for Jefferson City, we have Eli McVeigh, Wolfram, 812. A kind of newer member to the team. He just joined uh, maybe a week ago, I believe, a week or two ago. And so he is newer, uh, but he's really kind of filled that role in that top lane position. Really Already a first wow, blood in the bottom lane in favor of Rockbridge High School. Nami, that would be Dawson Kroom actually securing that first blood kill. The gold will go towards the support player. Uh, probably preferred to go through the ADC, but hey, nothing to complain about, right? Yeah, that's like Summoner for Summoner spell. Dawson using is Exhaust, I believe, and he'll going down for Turtle. And uh, while we're already down here, though, we have the AD carry of Jefferson City. I actually used to be the A team player, and then he was gone for a little bit, but he's back after the B team. We have Kong, Tron, in the bot. King, Aggressive Tron, play coming in evolution. as Quinn Kemper attempts to go in for a gank. It does not go successfully. Meanwhile, we have Jordan roaming up to top. But he's probably not going to dive that Alawi. Yeah, as you said a little bit earlier, again, back to Quinn Kemker playing the Olaf pick, Dragon the God, big axe-wielding berserker. And with this particular skin, he's a college dude. <laughs> he's a dude bro. <laughs> Broloff. Broloff skin. Yeah, we have Silver Eagle 99, Jarrett Kimball, uh, traditionally the 80 carry for the B team. Uh, he's actually, here he is playing mid lane, having to summon at the last minute uh, for a member that was unable to make it today. So... Well, we'll see how he does here against like Best very of luck to all pick. team players tonight. Uh, about four minutes in, one kill in favor of Rockbridge High School. Just about a 200, make that 300 gold lead in favor for Rockbridge. Again, uh, gold dictates who can uh, who's more powerful at, at any given time. With gold, you can buy more powerful weapons. That traditionally means you've got more experience. Oh, unfortunate execution by for, the chickens. Oh, yes. the raptors. Raptor camp, Jordan oh, Taylor falls victim to the jungle camp. Not something you usually see in competitive League of Legends, but... Uh, yeah, it happens to everyone. It still happens. <laughs> hap hey, happens to me. Uh, yeah, we, we can't also forget about the support for uh, Jefferson City's B squad. We have Elijah Preston, Dark Chaos, playing the Morgana pick. Um, very... I, I like this pick, actually. I like the pick, too, especially in Tanami, is where you can bubble, just like you see right there. Uh, you can shield yourself in case a, a stray bubble may be catching you or the AD carry off yeah, guard. You gotta wonder, we missed it earlier though. We were announcing who was who, but you gotta wonder how uh, the bot lane got the upper hand there, probably run the level two power spike and got the pick on Dark Chaos. Elijah did not flash, so maybe just got the upper hand there, didn't expect the damage to come out. Yeah, uh, we'll nor see. was the exhaust blown for uh, Elijah Dark Chaos. Here we have another close call for the jungler on Jefferson City this time. Let's see if he's able to finish off these camps. Uses the smite to regain some health. He'll be fine. Another kill coming in for Rockbridge High School. As uh, this time, Riley Rilo picks up the kill. 
And it's kind of what I said earlier, actually. Uh, there's not a whole lot, honestly, that a Lucian can really do into a Caitlyn. Caitlyn has this really strong ability allows, that's called her, her net, basically, and it allows her to kind of evade an attack, and she kind of uh, jumps back in the opposite direction that she shoots. It also slows an enemy and allows her to proc a headshot, which deals bonus damage on whoever she lands the net on. And Solution, this character here that Turtle's playing, has a, a short dash, and Caitlyn can just net immediately after he dashes in, get out of the range, and then deal damage to him. There's really not a whole lot Lucian can do uh, in that matchup. So uh, the the Caitlyn Nami lane is really, really good into, into Lucian. And also, Lucian's not very meta anyway. For so. sure. Uh, we perhaps should leave it on direct camera just for a little bit in case we get another kill on our feed without seeing it. Uh, meanwhile, both junglers taking more camps, taking Scuttle Crab in the river, just looking for an opportunity to flank any of these three lanes that you see on the map. Uh, let's talk about CS differentials. Those are the numbers you see right at the bottom half of your screen, the 38 to 42. Flash coming in from Wolfram uh, gets out without any... Uh, without any deaths. Uh, but yes, going back to the CS differentials, these are the numbers where uh, that add up towards minion kills. And with each minion kill, you are granted a little bit of gold that contributes to the overall gold differentials. You see 9.9 .9 to 9.1K in favor of Rockbridge High School. Another trade coming in in the mid lane between Silver Eagle uh, here comes a gank from Dragon the God. Flash out from Tristan Reed uh, playing Malzahar tonight for Rockbridge. He's going to get out unscathed, but uh, maybe the jungler will come back for a second gank if he's not too careful. Yeah, quick escape coming out by Mini. We saw the Predator on the Olaf pick, Dragon the God, Quinn, and Predator basically allows him to run very, very quickly <laughs> in for a gank, and not very often that anyone's really able to escape, but he did burn his flash, so he won't have that the next time uh, Quinn comes around and tries to find a gank in the mid lane. Oh yes, Predator Olaf, uh, pretty pretty scary when you see him pop that Predator uh, ability that comes from his runes and masteries. Not much you can do, even if you've got a ward in your river. As we approach the eight minute mark, Slight lead going in favor of Rockbridge High School. No serious turret damage for any of the lanes. Mm -hmm. and probably the biggest CS differential does come from the mid lane. Uh, we see Silver Eagle 99, Jarrett Kimball pulling ahead by almost uh, oh, seven. Well, was a little bit ago, it was almost 10 CS over Tristan, uh, which is kind of crazy because uh, Malzahar does have really good wave clear, so it might just be missed last hitting. Uh, and at again, the same you don't get the CS time, Cues, though, hitting. refund yeah. mana when you when you successfully get a CS. Yeah, I would assume the Malzahar would outpush, but we'll see here. Again, it could, like I said before, it could just be missed last hitting. If you don't get the last hit that kills uh, the minion, you actually don't get the gold for it or the creep score. So it comes down to just maybe fundamental. Dragon the God, Quinn Kemper going in for a second gank on bottom lane. Bubble lands from Dasso on the turtle. They immediately retreat from that. No thank you, says as he gets oh! sniped from Riley. Beautiful sniper ultimate coming in from Riley. The AD carry for Rockbridge High School. They are now uh, three kills over uh, Jefferson City in the bottom lane. Huge advantage now going in favor of Riley and Dawson, the uh, bot lane duo. And this is this is straight a 2v2 matchup here. Uh, while Quinn Kemper was right down there, there's really been no actual jungle ganks. And so straight up, they're just winning the 2v2 right now. And it goes a better, better drafting right here. And honestly, Caitlyn Nami is really hard to beat with Illusion. And we do know that uh, Riley has been working on expanding her champion pool recently. We saw the Jinx, I believe, last week or, or two weeks ago that made a huge impact in their game. It, it's great to see that uh, players are, are moving past their one-trick champions that they hang on to and are exploring different options, more stronger meta picks in the game. Yeah, that's the crazy thing here. She's only going to get stronger and stronger in this game. We did see that she is taking Gathering Storm, so every 10 minutes she gets a little bit more damage, makes her scaling further and further the later this game goes. And we talk about scaling and how strong characters get the later the game goes. Uh, Lucian, on the other hand, played by Turtle, uh, Kingtron, it's not as good. <laughs> definitely not as good, and it definitely doesn't scale as well, uh, especially when we talk about range later on. Caitlyn just has so much more range than the Lucian. Jefferson City starting to approach Dragon, but they get spotted pretty quickly as Rockbridge pings towards. Ultimate coming down for Turtle Khan does pick up a kill, 
making his first kill of the game in favor of Jefferson City against Tristan Reed. Maybe uh, going in a little too hard before his teammates could back him up around Dragon Pit. Yeah, pretty big pickup by Jefferson City there. We saw multiple members roaming up to the mid lane. They knew that uh, the bot lane for Rockbridge had just recalled, so they weren't able to match there. And they pick up the kill on Tristan. Oh, bubble does bubble. land. JT Platts also going in, but Dawson picks up the kill yet again for the support player. Both support or both support and AD carry for Jefferson City. Two, zero, and two. That means two kills, zero deaths, two assists as they now move on to the first objective of the game, which would be an Earth Dragon. And Earth Dragon, of course, as uh, you may or may not know, gives you extra damage towards towers and champions. Here comes a team fight, though. Unstoppable. Ultimate coming in for Dragon the God, but he quickly backs off. Silver Eagle going all the way. Huge ultimate coming down for Jordan Taylor. Everyone's knocked pretty low. Ow. Flashes out from Quinn, but he is ulted twice <laughs> as Riley picks up her third kill of the game, I believe. Yeah, <laughs> Tristan just coming in to lock the pick down for Riley to pick up. She's 303. Dawson does go down, as does Jordan, but. They pick up the dragon, the Earth Drake, which is a great dragon to have. And they do pick up three kills in return. So great job by Rockbridge. For sure. Teleport coming in for Eli McVeigh as he tries to defend mid lane turret against Tristan Reed, picking up the CS on the way. Chances are we won't see any huge engagements coming out of that. But uh, do note that the summoner spell, Teleport, is now down, which has a five minute cooldown by default. Yeah, with that, though, they're up by about 1,000 gold, three kills, one dragon. I get to go back to the Earth Drake again. Earth Drake does, or Elemental Drakes do grant their entire team a buff when taken. A very important neutral objective to fight around, uh, specifically the later the game goes. Uh, the Earth Drake grants bonus damage towards structures like towers and bonus damage towards other neutral objectives like monsters, like but barons, and other dragons. So. Slight tease coming in from Jordan Taylor as he thumbs up emotes towards the mid lane, trying to provide a little bit of backup for Tristan. Meanwhile, both AD carry and support in bot lane for Rockbridge High School applying their pressure. Hopefully they can get that turret down and transition their lead to the other lanes. Both junglers roaming around the bottom side of this map. That's the bottom right hand corner potentially uh, getting ready for another team fight as we see pings going forward for both Jefferson City and Rockbridge High School. And that's really where to go when you talk about uh, where you want to put your pressure at. Bot lane right now is a lot stronger for Rockbridge High School. We see Riley picking up her first item, uh, the Static Shiv. Uh, she's currently up by about 800 gold over her lane opponent, uh, Turtle, in the bot lane. And so she's significantly stronger right now at this point in the game. Uh, this is a good... I could think it's a good lane to focus. Meanwhile, that's they four to of Jefferson City's teammates roaming towards middle lane. Finally see missing pings coming from the bottom lane of uh, Rockbridge High School. Dragon the God throwing an axe, missing. Uh, just to put a little fear into him. Meanwhile, in the top lane, we have a one versus one team fight. Frozen Maelstrom, that would be Lee Toller, does pull off the 1v1 versus Eli McVeigh. He is still over 60% health right now. He's going to continue pushing down his wave hopefully securing the first tower of the game. Uh, first tower, uh, by the way, does give additional gold to the rest of your team, a very important objective to take. Yeah, that was a nasty ultimate coming into the top side of the map. They're relatively even uh, this far into the game. No one really had a clear CS uh, advantage, I guess, pulling into the mid part of this game, or it's 15 minute mark. CS is relatively close across the board. We see a 25, uh, 28 difference uh, in the bot lane, which makes sense. We've seen a lot of deaths go down in the bot lane. They lose a lot more pressure. But for the most part, pretty even uh, lane-wise, although the kill lead, of course, is in Rockbridge's favor. So I, guess, yeah. in the bot I guess we know who wins the 1v1 trade versus uh, Urgot and Alawi. Yeah. Uh, so that's, that's pretty impressive from Lee Tolner, who is very solid every single uh, game. Meanwhile, Dragon the God finally coming in for his third gank. And there's another gank in the mid lane as mini Tristan Reed does go down for a one-to-one -one trade. Yeah, looks like an Silver unsuccessful Eagle gank, though, in the Jared. bot lane by Jeff City. But like I said before, yeah, one for one trade in the mid lane. Uh, like I said, Jordan picks up the kill. Both mid laners go down, so not going to be too much pressure there. Jordan doesn't elect to push the lane. Uh, unsuccessful gank, though, in the bot lane as well. Uh, Dragon God Quinn, he's been all over the place, but yet to find uh, a really solid gank. 
Yes, attempted three ganks in the bottom lane, but they were able to get out every single time. Uh, perhaps spending too many resources down there is going to put him behind uh, in terms of experience. Uh, as the 80 carry support duo for Rockbridge High School continues to push their lane. Now with a pretty big difference in uh, CS creep score is the abbreviate is what is abbreviated for 115 CS to Turtles 80. Again, that is Riley Olinger, the 80 carry for Rockridge High School versus Kang on Jefferson City. Again, all the all the ganks that have come out though from Quinn. He's been every lane all over the place. He is up by almost 20 CS uh, to his counterpart in the jungle, being Jordan Taylor. Uh, at least he, his, his pathing at least might be a little bit better. Even though he's putting pressure in lanes, he's still not falling behind in the farm game. Yes, Jordan more focused on helping his lane secure any kills, uh, just like what we saw in the mid lane with Tristan and Jarek. Quinn actually showing himself in mid lane, giving away his position. Uh, that's one of the things as a jungler main, uh, you don't want to do too, too often because it, it kind of telegraphs your, your movements. He, the rest of Jefferson City now knows that he is bottom side, uh, potentially you know, letting Riley and Dawson know to play a little more safe. We can't just engage because uh, Dragon the God, uh, Quinn is just lurking in the corners. Mm -hmm. Now this bot tower is getting pretty low on the side of Jefferson. Oh, another engage another code the top Another one versus lane. one ultimate does come down for Eli McVeigh, but it looks like he is losing health very quickly. Frozen Maelstrom does not secure any kills as uh, Eli attempts to back out of this situation, which gives more opportunities for Lee Tolner to push the lane and potentially get that first tower blood. Yeah, Malawi is not finding any openings in this matchup here. Very rough. It didn't even look close up there in the top lane. I've never seen the teleport, though, coming in from Wolfram, 812, Eli McVeigh. And you got to wonder, though, is that they teleport... They go straight into a skirmish yet again. Loses yeah. the trade. And he using that teleport, though, means he won't be able to teleport to the other side of the map. Uh, on, the, on the flip side, though, for Rockbridge High School, they did secure the first tower of the game, that bot tower, as well as the dragon has respawned, this time being a fire drake, which grants bonus damage to all of your team as the later the game goes. And, and perhaps a won't have potential TP. misplay in macro... Uh, as both bottom and support immediately recall, we have Jefferson City moving in on Dragon Pit, clearing any wards, but afraid to there maybe... We go. There we yeah, go. Starting call. the Dragon, yeah, good, good call. calls. Noticing that both bottom and support are all the way back at base. They can burst down this Dragon as quickly as possible. Tristan Mini hovering around the outside of the Dragon Pit. He is unable to do anything about that. First Infernal Drake going for Jefferson City. Huge, arguably the best, Infer or the best Drake in the game. Uh, because once you slay that guy, you get permanent attack and ability power damage increase. Yeah, pretty big misplay. Uh, the top laner, oh, Eli McVeigh, just used teleport, so they could have engaged knowing that he couldn't make it down there. We are seeing the lane swap, though. So the bot lane now, after they secure that tower, they're going to go top lane now, translate that pressure, and see if they can get that tower on this top side of the map. So let's see if Wolfram, what he can do in a 2v1 matchup. We'll say, though, what Lowey actually does decently well into... Uh, I guess a more two versus yeah, one exactly, situation. Yeah, exactly. A number disadvantage as it's more people to hit with her tentacles, and she heals off of that. Yes, Eli's so. character just does better in team fights, and maybe we'll see. Uh, we'll maybe we'll see Eli uh, being a little more successful when we come to the five versus five situations. Mm -hmm. He has picked up his first item, the Black Cleaver. Very important when we talk about how much damage allowing or the items that she needs to deal damage, and so it's important the first pickup of the game. But otherwise, though, it's slowed back down again. Things are going back to neutral, uh, fixing the lanes. Looks like the bot lane for Jefferson City is going to meet the bot lane for Rockbridge in the top side of the map. We're actually Here seeing we go. a 3v2 situation. The Predator Olaf going in one more time. Uses his ult maybe a little too quickly as Dawson flashes out, throws down the ultimate. Ooh. Does get killed, but huge burst damage coming from Riley. Jordan does not elect to go in for the cleanup kills, and instead, uh, another two versus one situation now in the... Oh, oh. bad dash by <laughs> Kang. He didn't have flash either. He did flash forward to get the kill earlier, but he does survive the ultimate from Riley. Yes, Ooh. if you do not play League of Legends, just know that uh, Riley's ultimate, which is a long-range sniper shot, it can be body blocked, meaning your, your teammate can come in and step in front and take that shot for you. A mm -hmm. uh, little miscommunication 
or a little misplay happening for uh, Jefferson City, but it's does not if you don't move. <laughs> die. Yes, just yeah. don't move. Don't and flash. <laughs> in the top, and back in the bot lane, though, Lee getting another kill on Eli. And, and going, uh, I almost wish, like we just said before, that they didn't lane swap. Eli, uh, the Alawi pick will do better in a 2v1 matchup, and he's already been losing this 1v1. Why send him bot where he was already losing this matchup? And now, now he's got all this pressure in the bot lane. Yeah, both. We see the Lee Tolnier now knocking on the second tier tower. The one man army with the shotgun knees as he pushes down tier two turret. Meanwhile, Tristan Mini does manage to get his first kill against enemy mid laner Jarek Kimball, Silver Eagle 99. Might look like the Lee will pick up that tower though. Nothing the Dragon the God, Quinn Kemper, could actually do. It's going to give them a huge gold lead. Now around 4,000 gold in favor of Rockbridge High School. Ten kills to Jefferson City's five. Uh, both towers tower. <laughs> uh, quickly going down in the bottom lane, Tier 2 tower. In the top lane, Tier 1 tower. As Jefferson City has yet to make their first break into their enemy towers. Maybe potentially doing that right now. But we see Jordan Platts going in, all in for a combo. Great ultimate aimed by Dosso, the mermaid mm -hmm. tonight, yeah, clean knocking up, up Morgana. Clean pickup by Jefferson City Play there fight. coming around. A little bit of an overstay there by Jefferson City, and I kind of get what they're trying to do there. They're trying to force objectives here and there. Meanwhile, they're... Tough to do when you're behind yeah. and don't have vision, yeah, though. They're trying to find plays. I like that they're not trying... Oh, he runs right into the bush, getting ulted by Tristan Mini. Uh, Kane goes down immediately. One more kill going over to Riley. With the AD carry down, they now have a lot of pressure in this mid lane, hopefully getting their third, I mean, excuse me, fourth tower of the game. Uh, mid lane tower also very important because it's the most immediate direct path to the enemy nexus. And Rockbridge High School, they have firm control over this game. They're dictating the pace of it. They're really deciding when and where they want to fight, what objectives they want to take. And Jefferson City currently doesn't have an answer. So that's one of the problems we noticed uh, earlier in the season for Rockbridge B team. We've always observed Lee Tolner in the top lane getting ahead, but never translating that lead tonight. He's doing exceptionally well, pushing down uh, three towers, uh, excuse me, two towers uh, for Rockbridge High School. Looks like Coach has uh, instructed them a little bit better when it comes to macro play. Both teams with uh, one player in the top or bottom lane and four players in the mid lane. We may see a skirmish coming up as soon as somebody finds a pick. Mm -hmm. And item wise here, this is where we're talking about the mid game when players start picking up their second, maybe third item uh, where teams are really starting to consider team fighting. And we're seeing the engage coming in from Quinn Kemper, Dragon the God with his Predator Olaf, not being able to lock anyone down though again. But again, comparing items, items are what make champions stronger, players stronger the later the game goes. It's what gives them their stats. And you got to look at the mid lane, though. We got to see Silver Eagle, J uh, Jarrett Kimball. He does have two items completed, while Tristan is a little bit behind. So th they do see a little bit of an advantage there in the mid lane. Gold is actually relatively even. It's the bot lane, though, where the gold difference is uh, pretty pretty substantial. Uh, sure. Rilo is up by almost 3,000 gold over Turtle. Uh, up a total completed item. And... You know, again, we talked about the Lucian pick uh, by Turtle. Doesn't scale very well, and this is the point in the game where he needs to be kind of carrying, and he should be coming online. It's kind of a difficult position to be in. Well, meanwhile, Rockbridge High School starts to group around the next Dragon objective, which is up in about 10 seconds. Jefferson City does notice this and pushes the middle lane just a little bit, but uh, maybe they'll back out. No, they go full in for this turret. They Without will pick up fear this for a flank, which Ooh, is unfortunate. Uh, kind of saw that coming. Meanwhile, uh, ultimate comes down. Two ultimates going down on the support for Jefferson City uh, as they are bloodthirsty, chasing down the rest of the squad. With that pick, they are able to move on to the second Infernal Drake of the game. Looks like uh, it may be taken immediately by Rockbridge High School, giving them that damage advantage. Now Riley just picked up a kill on the other AD carry as well. So the bottom lane with Jefferson City going down. They're going to translate into the second fire Drake of the game. Pretty pretty clean team fight. That was a great gank by Jordan. JT plays in the jungle position. Looks like everyone's going to reset here. Jordan, uh, Jordan Taylor, the jungler for Rockbridge High School, was actually a support main before the season even started. Let's take a look at the instant replay. Oh, actually, that's odd. 
This Does is actually the record. replay from last week's game. <laughs> Obviously, did not not uh, not save correctly. But you know, shout out to last week though, uh, where Battle <laughs> took on. Jefferson City. That's right. We'll have to check that out again. Uh, but but thank you for what we're trying to <laughs> highlight, though, is uh, Jordan Taylor, again, uh, originally a support main, filled in on the B-team roster for Rockbridge High School as a jungler and has learned a lot since since joining the team. I, I, I would say that uh, he's, he's a, picking up the position really, really well, which is unlike any other position in League of Legends, mm -hmm. where you're kind of playing this game of chess against your rival jungler. We hear it pretty commonly. Uh, how often he wants to pick up different champions all the time. He's a very good student of the game. And so it's pretty exciting to watch him really mesh well and find plays around the map. And I just noticed that the bottom lane turret for Rockridge High School is barely, is almost untouched as it only has a few uh, ticks of damage for Jefferson City. Jefferson City now angling towards top side, hoping to find a pick for their team as they approach three versus one against Lee Tolner. They're kind of dancing around, though, not fully committing to this gank. Meanwhile, in the bottom lane, a four versus three situation, or four versus two situation. They pick up a clean kill on Silver Eagle 99, Jarrett Kimball. Very surprised nobody had actually gone in to take out Lee Tolner. He was just by himself, three versus one. They didn't even want to mess with him. He's such a big threat right now, pulling a lot of aggro. And unfortunately, uh, Rockbridge is able to identify this and, and find their own advantage in the middle lane. Yeah, Rockbridge is up by 7,000 gold. I will say they've come to scale a little bit better here. We're going to look about uh, Eli McVay, Wolfram, whether or not he can turn some of these fights with the damage coming out from his Alawi as he starts picking up more items. He's probably the best bet if you don't take into account the Silver Eagle 99 playing the Karthus, which of course will deal a lot of damage. But it's going to be whether or not they can actually lock them down. Or We've seen countless times uh, Quinn Kempker, Dragon the God, running in his Olaf, but just unable to lock them down. They just don't have enough CC to keep them in place for all of this damage. Yeah, the only way they're going to get engaged like that is if uh, Elijah does find a pick with her with her uh, Q ability. Who, who yeah, does the Dark root, Binding. Yes, the Dark Binding. Six which seconds, which is pretty good. But that only locks down one person. We see a lot of disengage from Dawson's ultimate as well, the Nami pick. So it's going to be very, very difficult, I think, for Jefferson City to find the fights that they want, the fights they need to kind of come ahead. And of course, again, like before, they're also down by almost 8,000 gold. Ultimate does go down for all sides of the map. Huge pickup for Mini Tristan. Another one for Lee Tolner. Gets a double kill. Fight continues on. J4 ultimate going down. Nobody dying for Rockbridge High School. Actually, I take that back. Lee Tolner does go down. Thanks to Silver Eagle's passive where he does continue to do damage following his death. However, a very great trade ace for Rockbridge High School as they are now chipping away at the Baron objective, which does give super, uh, super powers to the the minions that roam around the map and a quick recall as you see right now huge fight in favor of Rockbridge as they potentially might be cleaning yeah. this up yeah. in the next few minutes yeah really clean pickup you see multiple ultimates coming out chain cc we see the malazar ultimate you see the nami ultimate there's no way for kane to survive that he goes down immediately one of the damage threats for Rockbridge high school and we see the Lowy ult though they are in one place the is beating him down but they're just so far behind they just don't have enough damage we're going to try again real quick to see if the replay did record this time around. So we're going to hold up for us to see if we can rewatch that team fight. And we can indeed. Hooray. Here we are in the mid lane. <laughs> and we see multiple members of Jefferson City. Uh, they're kind of pinging around, playing around the Baron. We know all Rock Rush does have vision. Right here. Mm -hmm. Tristan ultimate. Reed starts out with a beautiful ultimate going into Lucian. And it does <laughs> clean up the kill. Meanwhile, tons of AoE damage coming in from Lee Tolner as he... Shotgun knees, mm -hmm. his team, or his enemies. Uh, and the probably important thing to really uh, talk about in that fight is that that's kind of the fight that Jefferson City wanted. They wanted the, it, all that AOE damage. You talk about Karthus, uh, you talk about Alawi's ultimate. That's what they wanted. They wanted them to all be in that, uh, in kind of in that area. The problem was, though, Riley was on the outside of the fight, one of the main damage dealers for Rockbridge, and she was nowhere near any of that damage. Like, they just don't have a way to lock her down, lock down all the team members. And so that's the way Rockbridge wanted to play the fight. And 
kind of just highlights some of the uh, shortcomings of this composition. For Perhaps Jeff too City. far behind to engage in the team fights, even the ones that they're looking for. Mm -hmm. Riley Olinger currently eight kills, zero deaths, eight assists as she is carrying this team to victory. Huge predator coming in from Dragon the God. Another ultimate coming in from J4. However, here comes all the damage. That fight going a little Jefferson bit better City. for Jefferson City, though. And you know why? Their carry is not there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, Riley was not there, and they sat inside most of that damage, the AoE damage again, come the Alawi ultimate, the Karthus, and yeah, Riley wasn't there to clean it up. So maybe, maybe there is a chance yes. here. Ultimately uh, a three-for-three three three trade. Kind of in favor for Jefferson City. Oh, yeah, City. that's true. The shutdowns are important. It was an even trade in terms of kills, but they do get some shutdown goals and buy themselves a little bit of reprieve. Uh, that's Baron now down on three members of Rockbridge High School, so uh, buying them a little bit more time in this game. We'll see what happens next team fight as hopefully they, uh, Rockbridge High School has all members a part of the, the fight. But mm -hmm. uh, that choke, though, the, the, the choke point in the top side jungle was pretty effective for the composition that Jefferson City is trying to run. And those are the kind of the fights they want to find. They found so many of those last week uh, into Battle High School, and that's really what allowed to carry some of those team fights. And it's going to be kind of about these win conditions. you got to wonder. It's, I don't think that was enough <laughs> to say that uh, Jefferson City can maybe win some more of these team fights in an even matchup. But if they can keep finding fights without Riley, if more or less Rockridge uh, tries to fight, I guess, without Riley. Very aggressive and teleport. Jefferson City will probably win. Coming in from Tristan Reed as he teleports into, into the, dragon the Dragon Pit pits. while Jefferson City is on the Dragon Pit. They are now currently fighting over Dragon. Rockbridge does not secure the Dragon. Meanwhile, huge ultimates coming down from both sides of the team. Riley is now a part of this fight. Secures a double kill. Gets shut down, though, because of that Karthus passive, with leaving only one member of Jefferson City High School alive. Here comes Lee Tolner, though, with his shotgun knees as he propels forward, securing the final kill. Five kills to one kill in favor of Rockbridge High School as they push down the bottom lane inhibitor turret. And that is what this comp was meant to do. It's honestly kind of beautiful to see the CC, the CC, they're knocked up, they're stunned, they're suppressed, and they can't do anything on Jefferson City side. They just don't have enough disengage. They don't have enough engage or disengage, honestly, to deal the kind of damage they need to win these fights. And they just melt them one by one with Riley in the back line, uh, with the ultimates coming out from Tristan, with the lockdown coming in from Jordan. Great composition. And the shotgun knees fighting. from Lee Tolner doing lots of damage to the enemy Jefferson City team. I guess one silver lining for Jefferson City, though, is that they did secure their second Infernal Drake. That's three total in this map, so they do a little more damage for the next team fight. We'll see what happens as items start to level out. Again, the further you go into League of Legends, the longer the respawn times, and the more time your enemy team has to catch up to gold differentials. Mm -hmm. <laughs> There's a pretty substantial goal differential as well, though. Almost 14,000 gold in favor of Rockridge High School. In professional games, you don't really see this much of a gold lead uh, going without the game ending very soon. And you got to wonder, what, what's the play now for Rockridge? Uh, they got to rotate to the top lane. They just, took, they just did take their first inhibitor of the game, so they have pressure now in that bot lane. They can focus on the mid, focus on the top, and close out this game. They probably aren't in any risk of being outscaled. Uh, again, the team fighting from Jefferson City is a little bit weird because of the picks that they have. But, you know, the sooner they end this game, uh, at least they have control right now. They, the, really, the ball is all in their court to figure out when this game is going to end. For sure, Jefferson City picking three uh, mid-game champions. And now that the mid-game uh, is essentially over as we transition to late game, it's going to be tougher for them to win these team fights. Uh, meanwhile, Riley picking a very late game scaling champion, but she was far ahead early and mid. Mm -hmm. uh, only does even more damage now. Yeah, Same thing going for Tristan Reed. Four items completed, 10, 1, and 10. 20 KDA currently. I mean, actually, we just saw uh, Kang, Turtle, uh, the AD carry for Jefferson City. He did pick up his Mercurial Skimitar, uh, meaning that he can... I guess kind of cleanse the CC that's been put on him time and time again in these team fights. Uh, Rockbridge is really isolating him as a threat, locking him down and killing him before he has any chance uh, in these team fights at all. We'll say though, he is six and six currently, which for how kind of badly they lost the bot lane, having an even scoreline isn't isn't a bad look. Keeping up, yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Rockbridge High School now knocking down on the doors of top lane inhibitor turret of Jefferson City. Root does come on. And Ultimate does go in from Dragon the God as he chases in but walks quickly out. We're seeing yet another combination going in for Rockbridge High School. Cleanup kills happening all across the board. That is one, two, three, four, five kills for Rockbridge and zero deaths. As they most likely will wrap up the game on this last turret. Lee Frozen Maelstrom tanking the turret shots, unafraid of uh, losing his health because he's got quite the damagey team to back him up. That's, that's just clean team fighting right there. Everyone doing what they're supposed to do. And they're just so far ahead. It's, there's not a lot to really say about some of these team fights. They're executed the right way, the right before CC, and then the damage coming sure. out from this composition. Would have liked insane. to see maybe some summer spells popped on Jefferson City. But that is the game. Congratulations, Rock Bridge. B team, you are the victors of week six, Yukatsu High School Esports League, brought to you by Columbia College. Very well executed team comp. Mm -hmm. Very well executed. Lee Tolner able to transition his lead from top lane. Same thing goes for Riley and Dawson in the bot lane, just kind of switching and, and applying that much more pressure to the side lanes. Mm -hmm. And I think some of that is uh, attributed to. Well, I guess, of course, the winning bot lane, which they've been doing time and time again in the last couple of games. Even when they've lost, Rockbridge's bot lane does usually look pretty clean. Uh, same thing with their top lane. And putting Tristan back on a more comfortable pick, the Malzahar, something with wave clear, something that both teams, Rockbridge, they just didn't have last week, and they got... Uh, they didn't. They got beat. So uh, going back into it, a much better composition, a much better, I guess, idea of what their team wants to do, and it was executed pretty much perfectly. Yeah. Great job, Rockbridge High School. Don't go anywhere, ladies and gentlemen. We will be back in about 15 minutes as we take our intermission for game, uh, with the A-team game uh, between Jefferson City and Rockbridge High School. Thanks for watching the Yukatsu High School Esports League. Again, brought to you by Columbia College. Couldn't have been done without you. Stick around. Mm -hmm. I like to... <laughs> I love that video. Watching that makes me so happy. If you didn't notice in that last clip, uh, one of our high school esports uh, players, Renee Tellman, actually getting her first victory royale in Fortnite. And why are we talking about Fortnite, Ben? Yeah, for those of you guys who think you guys, or honestly, you guys all think you're so great at Fortnite. We hear it all the time. <laughs> so it's time to put your money where your mouth is. Uh, we've had multiple middle schoolers actually come to our weekly Fortnite tournaments and sweep the table and walk away with actual cash prizes. So come out every Tuesday from about 6 to 9.30 where we have a weekly Fortnite tournament, solos and duos. You guys think you're so good? Well, prove it and come home, show your parents, hey, I just made money playing video yeah. games. Uh, last night we I had I won 30 a, bucks last night. Yeah, we had a... Beat me we if you can. Seventh grader, I believe, he walked home and his parents were like, "Wow, is he a professional gamer now? Can you, can you play in college?" <laughs> Technically, if he yeah. was paid to to win something, hey, yeah. you could be. Alongside of that as well, we are also reviving or not reviving. Maybe we're trying to start and really uh, secure a spot as, as the fighting game community in Colombia. Uh, we're doing a Dragon Ball Fighters. We're doing maybe potentially some Street Fighters, some Tekken, of course, Smash Bros as well. Uh, those side tournaments are right along oh, yes. in the back here uh, with the Fortnite challenge. So come out here if you enjoy your fighting games, because we want to be that scene for you guys in Colombia as well. That's right. Open to all ages. We're all about building gamer communities here, whether you're, uh, uh, again, all ages. Whether you're in college, we got some frat boys that have uh, said they wanted to show up to next week's Fortnite challenge. So show them up if you can. Uh, it's only $5 to enter the tournament, and we do have a small registration fee. But let's return to our game Two for our week six of Yukatsu High School Esports League brought to you by Columbia College. I believe they have gone through their pro draft and are now in Champion Select. So let's talk about the teams uh, 
that we have here tonight. These are very important matches for both rosters. For Jefferson City's A squad, they are still winless. So they're hoping to pick up their first victory tonight against, uh, honestly, up until last week, the undefeated Rockbridge High School. And now for Rockbridge, though, every single match now matters. Matters a whole lot because they're planning on coming back, meeting Hickman again in the third round robin, and doing the rematch. Hopefully they'll still only have one loss to each other and they're really hoping to come together during that tiebreaker and really decide who is the best team in this league. That's right, because in week five, that would be last week, Rockbridge High School did fall to Hickman High School in their second game of the season. Uh, Coach Cobb has since bounced back and has really wrangled this team together. They're hoping to, to, to prove how well they can communicate and, and effectively macro uh, their way to to a win. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's very, very important, uh, both for Hickman and for Rockbridge here. If they lose any games up until the point where they meet each other again, they likely will not be able to come back. And a little forfeit there, potential first, first seed coming into playoffs. Absolutely right. Rockbridge High School hovering an assassin jungler. Could it be? Yep. We see a Rengar. We see, oh. Going back to the Zach Comfort pick for Jeffrey Galaxy That had Galaxy me Fox so Mullen. excited for a moment there. And see, this is... I'm, and see the Swain pick going over to the blue side. It's so very important. Swain is so strong in this meta. If you are on the blue side, it's almost a, it's almost pretty much a must pick. And if you're the red side, you either have to ban it or you have to have a counter prepared. We'll see if uh, Jefferson City does have an answer for that. We do see the top lane they pick up for Waddle Dosh. Chase Rue is uh, honestly kind of at first the quiet carry, but he's really come out to be a standout performer in this uh, in this game, uh, picking Scion, something he performed very, very well on in the All-Star match at Columbia College, and see if he can do well into Andrew Vexq Apostle playing Kled, a pick we haven't yet seen, but very exciting to watch. Because for the mid lane, again, we talk about the Swain pick being played by Kill XL being picked up, and Potentially, he almost carried Battle's team last week in their B-team game to a victory single-handedly by the damage he could put out, by how much healing he had. Uh, will Jefferson City have an answer for that this time around? Uh, Dragon of the God being played again in the jungle position, picking Olaf once again. We're going to see, do they have CC, though? You know, that's an issue they ran into last time around in the B-team game. They certainly do this time with the Scion pick, but interesting pick from Cameron Day, the mid laner for Jefferson City, going for a Kali, which is an assassin type of champion. Now, if you look at the uh, Rockbridge team, though, Kled... Zach and Swain, those aren't necessarily your most squishy champions that you you can play in uh, League of Legends. We'll see how fed Cameron can get oh, right the off the Kaisa bat. Coming out for Michael XM. Haven't seen it yet. Very, very good. Another meta pick for Rockbridge High School. And this is beginning to look like, uh, well, honestly, a really, really strong composition. They're all, for the most Oof. part, very, very meta picks. A Tarek coming out as well. Rockbridge High School drafting seriously Fantastic. strong compositions. Fantastic team composition yep. coming from Rockbridge High School. And uh, for Jefferson City, we looks looks like we've got a very uh, snowball-dependent type of team composition. Uh, we'll see if there's enough damage coming out of Cameron Day uh, to push the early game lead and to wrap it up before we see a Swain or a Kaisa pop off in the later games. Mm -hmm. You gotta wonder, will Jefferson City have enough damage with this composition? It's really gonna come down to the Tristana pick being played by Jarrett Kimball, Silver Eagle 99. Uh, Tristana is a, an AD carry that does scale very, very well, but uh, I don't know if Akali will necessarily have the damage necessary to blow up this Swain unless he really snowballs early on. Because this time around for Rockbridge High School, they have a lot of early game damage, they have a lot of scaling damage, and they have a lot of sustain. So they're not going to go down very, very easily. Uh, Kali being played by Cameron Day, Escape Velocity in the mid lane, more of an assassin pick, something that really doesn't have sustained damage. They're more known for their burst. So that's, will he be able to kill some of these tanks? Will he be able to kill Justin Jang, the Kill XL in the mid lane? It's Those are the questions that we'll have to answer when we jump into this game, though. Yeah, that's really up to Quinn Kemper, Dragon the God, playing jungle for Jefferson City High School. We'll see if he can capitalize, maybe uh, provide a little more extra support for the mid laner of Jefferson City. A yeah, really great draft, though, by Rockbridge High School. Got to, got to hand it to them. This almost looks like one of the collegiate drafts that they had at the Midwest Campus Clash as well. Almost pick for pick. Very, very uh, exciting to see. We'll see if they can execute it properly. But, again, going to the bot lane. The normally before, Rockbridge has really opted to win their games through their bottom lane, through Michael X Sim, through Jay Hong, Sean Jay Hong Yu, and... This is a, these are two picks that we haven't seen them play yet. Kaisa being very, very strong, the newest marksman, and then Tarek. 
Uh, also very, very meta right now. His ultimate, when it comes down, grants invulnerability to all of his teammates in a little circle around him and his bonded uh, teammate. And that's huge for team fighting. It can really, really turn fights with a good Taric ultimate. So again, putting the tools in the hands of their bottom lane while the rest of their laners are on either comfort picks or picks that sustain so well they don't really need to worry about them or worry about resources too much. So I really, really like this draft for Rockbridge High School. Absolutely. And on the flip side, we do have Jefferson City High School, not just with Olaf uh, to, to follow up, but we do have a little more uh, tough, aggressive engages, which is what what that team really did need, at least yeah. if we were taking a look Last at game. B team, mm -hmm. uh, B team's match with the Scion ultimate as well as the Leona ultimate, uh, able to stun the the immediate enemies that they yeah. target. This will help uh, Akali, Tristana, and Olaf um, come into the fight and actually get a secured kill along the way. And if I recall, actually, Ryan Wilkerson, DJ Rice, one, two, three, four. Traditionally, Leona's been one of his most comfortable picks. Uh, banned away a couple of times, seen a band away in scrims, but that's actually one of his, uh, kind of his, like, kind of his one tricks, essentially. It's very, very known for his Leona. He said he hasn't played it much recently, but again, a very comfortable pick and does provide that CC that they were lacking in their composition last time around. But coming down into it again, though, it's the composition from Rockbridge High School is quite terrifying <laughs> when you talk about their engage, their ability oh, yes. to move forward. Uh, Kled's ultimate uh, basically turns into a giant ball and he runs very, very quickly and all of his teammates who follow along the same path also get to move very quickly. And again, kind of an issue that Jefferson City had last game, they didn't really have any disengage. They have a little bit more CC, more engage, but how are they going to escape? How are they going to avoid getting engaged on by the Zack, by the ultimate from Kaisa, by the ultimate from Kled? And it's going to be a little bit different. We will oh, see yes. though, uh, We've seen a lot of carry potential come out from members of this Jefferson City squad. Uh, Waddle Dosh performing time and time again. Actually, last week he had all but one of his team's kills. Uh, and it was like almost 12 impressive. kills, 12 of the 13 kills Very last impressive. time around. This time he's not playing as much of a carry champion on the Scion, more of a tank. But if Chase Rue is again pull it out, uh, tonight's going to be the game. Yes, that is the key matchup here tonight. At least in my opinion, we have Andrew Apostle. Uh, Vex Q up in the top lane for Rockbridge High School and Chase Ruiz Waddle Dosh in the top lane for Jefferson City. Both very competent top laners. I, I am looking very forward to their team fights or, or solo 1v1s if they do engage uh, despite the Scion Kled matchup. Mm -hmm. Yeah, excited. <laughs> I. Honestly, I'm not much of a top laner myself, so I don't really know what the matchup, the Kled into the Scion is. Uh, at least we're not seeing two tank picks, so hopefully we'll see a lot more action. And if we're talking about where the ganks need to go, I think top lane is where it should be. And when you talk about matchup differences and I guess how strong some of these players are in terms of like their experience playing this game, uh, it's very important to highlight that the bot lane for Rockbridge is where they usually win. But you know, they have a lot more experience when you take into account uh, Ryan Wilkerson, DJ Rice, one, two, three, four. He's only picked up this game, I believe, six months ago. So a very, very He's come new. a long way, yeah. for yeah. sure. That is for sure. Uh, this time paired up with Jarek Kimball, Silver Eagle 99 in his natural habitat bot lane. We'll see how they fare against Rockbridge's high school duo lane, who, was, who did play in the All-Star match over at the Midwest Campus Clash. Mm -hmm. Probably the one of the strongest bot lanes, if not the strongest in this league. Uh, they usually, with their aggressive play style, they're usually the ones that kind of carry the game for Rockbridge. Whether they want to admit it or not, their bot lane is the lane to watch out for. Now, of course, highlighting who is who for all of you parents out there, teachers and or sponsors, uh, we have Andrew Vexku in the top lane. Andrew Apostle playing Kled. Is this kind of a general... Uh, for Veteran, looking character. Yes, yes uh, he's riding this. It looks more like a dinosaur. Kled <laughs> is actually the person who is riding his mount. His The mount's name is Scarl specifically. A uh, very fun character to listen to. He's got a lot of fun quotes. Of course, in the jungle, we have Jeffrey Galaxy Fox Mullen playing his uh, patented Zack. Uh, last week, he had three, two or three objective steals on this pick. Uh, he's very... Very, very much one of his comfort picks. He loves oh, tanks, yes. loves to engage, and we see a lot of picks like this for Jeffrey, so very comfortable pick. Swain, for the first time, though, for Justin, Kill Excel Zang. Zang um, in the mid lane. Swain, very, very meta pick on the blue side. Uh, they, of course, got the pick. It wasn't banned away, and we'll see if Jefferson City does have the counter for it, though. Of course, in the bot lane, we talk about them a lot coming into it. We, of course, have Michael Zhu X Sim and Sean Yu Jae Hong in the bot lane on the newer Kaisa pick and the Tarek pick as well. Um, 
Likely pretty aggressive bot lane again. See how well they do into this uh, Tristana, into this Leona. And it looks like right now they're already giving them a lot of respect. We see Jarek and Ryan kind of backing off the wave there. But of course, for the top side of the map, actually already doing pretty well in these trades early on. Chase Ruiz, Waddle Dash on his Scion pick into Andrew in the top lane. Already knocking away the Scarl. Pretty good pickup. And of course now in the jungle position, once again we have Quinn Kemker playing Broloff once again. Actually not Broloff, playing Olaf, Referee not the Broloff Olaf, skin this yes. time. Switching skins up, switching it up for the viewers out there. And in the mid lane we have Cameron Escape Velocity Day playing yet another mid laner. I think he's played, oh, I don't think he's played the same mid laner. Maybe he's played Anivia twice, but he's switched up mid laners almost every single week. So we'll see if maybe Akali is the answer to the Swain pick. Again, though, coming in, Assassin's Deal burst, and Swain has all that sustain. We'll have to see he gets to get ahead. Uh, in the bot lane, we have Jarrett Kimball playing uh, the Tristana on Silver Eagle 99, and Orion Wilkerson, uh, DJ Race 1234, playing Leona. A lot of engage in this bot lane, and at least they scale really well on something that could be said that uh, couldn't be said though the Lucian pick last time around. Absolutely. And at the three minute mark, we see Jeffrey Galaxy Fox Mullen with his tried and true topside jungle invade as he prepares his first gank three minutes in. Wobble Dust does flash out of it unscathed, but a uh, little bit of fear put into mm -hmm. the top lane um, as Andrew Vex Q has a little more uh, freedom to go aggressive or to back off under his own Well, might see Jeffrey loop back around here for another gank. Of course, Chase did just burn his flash, so he has to take that into account. Uh, but yes. for the most part, he is winning this matchup. No flash well. this time for Chase Ruiz as he like does get down. knocked up repeatedly from Jeffrey Galaxy Fox Mullen. Mm -hmm. Does give first, first kill one. for Rockridge High School. Very smart re-gank coming in from Jeffrey using the lane bush to come in uh, yeah. un unnoticed. <laughs> and in the top side of the map, you always got to recall that once you flash, you got to be expecting you're in that island. If the jungler comes back again, you won't have that safety net where you'll be able to escape. And, and that's the thing too, that's something that top players need to take into account as well. He just TP back top lane again. And sometimes in the top lane, after you TP right after you lose, especially to the wave, sometimes the jungler comes back around again. So Jeffrey might have been able to come around one more time and maybe pick up another kill. We do have a skirmish in the bottom lane. Silver Eagle 99 does jump out to safety, but chip damage does come in. Overall trade in favor for Rockbridge High School as Michael and Sean do their do their thing in the bot lane. Yep. And Second so engagement coming in from top lane. These guys are bloodthirsty for each other. Waddle Dash not afraid to re-enter yep. with the minions yeah, this, this time to help him out. Yeah, this is very unfortunate for Andrew. Andrew should not have taken this fight. He's fighting in the minion wave, though. Interesting Although, back Trace away isn't from fighting Chase. Him, he though. should be fighting this fight. Yeah, he gets the Misses his back. cooldowns, and Andrew yeah, just actually, takes him one for yeah, one. Big misplay by Chase there, not attacking him in that minion wave. He might have had the advantage just to let, letting Andrew get up his, his stacks, get his Skarl back. And a good pickup, though, for Andrew. He's now 2-0. Chase is pretty far behind now. He just used his TP as well. He will have to walk back to lane. Well played by Jeffrey, putting it behind early on. I think that's where the pressure needs to go for the junglers. Bot lane's probably going to win on its own just from the play style and kind of the experience differential in the bot lane. So you put your pressure top lane. You want to kind of gimp the star player for Jefferson City, put him behind. And for Jefferson City side, that's kind of where Quinn needs to be. They kind of need to put him in a better position, him or Cameron. And it's not easy to gank a Tristana anyway. So Jeffrey electing to go top early. Uh, was the wise decision to make in this uh, in this team composition. That's where he can make the actual impact, and it's never fun to play against a Fed Klet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good job by Rockbridge for isolating the problems early on and trying to give their players a solution to it. Meanwhile, Jeffrey doing a little more jungle invading right now. Dragon the God, helpless to do anything about that as he pings for help, but can't really get it. Jeffrey knows exactly where his enemy jungler is at this moment, which means that all other lanes are free to play around this. They know that uh, Dragon, that would be Quinn Kempker, he, he's currently hovering topside jungle, trying to find some sort of experience because uh, his camps were just stolen away. But you see here in the bot lane, Sean and Michael know that they can go a little bit aggressive. They have no fear for the enemy jungler being there, not quite yet. 
Now, it looked like we might have seen a potential roam coming up from Justin. Pushed his lane, not quite to the tower, but maybe trying to find a way down to the bot lane. And I, I, that's probably not the way to go. Uh, Rockbridge's bot lane's already pushing in, unless you want to look for a dive under tower. Uh, they're probably going to win on their own. They're already up by about almost 20 CS. Uh, yes. Same thing with the mid lane, yep. actually. He's also up by almost 20 CS. Not much the Akali can do pre-6 into a Swain. Justin Zhang applying so much damage to this Akali played by Cameron Day in the mid lane. He is winning all of the trades so far as Quinn Kempker tries to angle towards this bottom lane, noticing that it is pushed out. Let's see if he can get a successful gank. He is currently only level 5, but does have blue smite to slow down the potential bot laners here. Still waiting just outside of Ward Vision. Here he comes charging in, but stun does go off for Sean. Beautiful disengage. Looks like he's experienced with Tarek too. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe a miscommunication there in Ooh, and Gage going in in the middle lane currently. Escape Velocity running out of energy, though. Ping's coming out. Jeffrey in the bottom lane trying to follow up on this Akali for Cameron Day. Isn't able to do so. Justin, uh, mid laner for Rockridge High School, running out of mana towards the end of that engagement. He's not able to follow up as well. Mm, and, and maybe that's kind of what I was hoping, because we saw so many ganks. La Ooh, there's a flash coming out from Jehan, trying to lock him down. Good jump, though. The Justana's able to buffer her jump, so even if she gets stunned, it'll still go off. Uh, well played by Silver Eagle 99 there. Uh, flash going down for Sean. But just as soon as that happens, though, Rockridge High School notices that bottom lane is going back. They immediately ping for this dragon, which would be an Infernal Drake. Huge uh, Drake in favor of Rockridge if they do secure this. Very great shot calling on behalf of Rockridge, noticing exactly when the mid laner and the bot laners uh, left mm -hmm. so that they can easily get this dragon. And that's the difference between like these teams and what you see in your traditional solo queue, the kind of ladder ranking system of League of Legends, is they're able to communicate very, very well, and you see excellent uh, macro play executed basically perfectly right there as soon as they leave they're right on it like you said I will definitely say that this Rockridge high school team has come a long way when it comes to macro shot calling for instance like that that was right as soon as they noticed that Tristana and uh, DJ Rice Silver Eagle were backing out of there oh, we're seeing it again more oh, invading coming in Quinn is not having fun in his jungle as everything is taken away from him this time it would be red buff Andrew <laughs> going in a little ham in the mid laner. Yeah, when you talk about wave clear a lot, especially against a team like Rockbridge High School that likes to have their presence be felt around the map, specifically in the jungle invades. Uh, when you don't have the wave clear to match it, it kind of gives all the roaming priority to, to Rockbridge. Since they can push the wave so much quicker, they can rotate that much better. Jeffrey Galaxy Fox Mullen does jump over the chicken pit. That'd be Wraiths. We're speaking Raptors. technically. Raptors. It used to be race. Oh, yes. A long time ago. It's every every year, <laughs> it, it, patches change all the time. Monsters change. The jungle changes every single season. It's like, that's tough for you junglers out there. I'm to adapt every year. Oh, yeah. yeah it, it's kind of rough looking in the mid lane. I would have liked to have seen more pressure from Quinn uh, in the mid lane or the top lane. He's ganked bot a couple of times now, and I was hoping maybe if they communicated it better, they have Leona now that can help lock them down, maybe seeing the Leona go in first so Quinn can actually get there. More often than not, we see Quinn uh, leading the charge, just unable to lock anyone down before he gets stunned or they get out of range of his Absolutely. With a almost 3,000 gold lead with a huge CS differentials coming in with the mid laner Justin Zhang over Cameron Day, 91 CS to 58 from the rival mid laner. Also in the bottom lane, 95 CS to Jefferson City's 67. Ooh, a pressy attack on that Kled, that rune allows him to deal more damage after he lands three procs. Uh, huge trades coming in in the top lane. Uh, not a good look for Chase right now, getting gimped really early on by Jeffrey. And well played, if that was the plan all along. It executed it really, really well. That's for sure. Plenty of pressure coming in from Justin in the mid lane as he pushes in the mid lane turret. Jefferson City and Rockbridge still trying to find their first tower of the game. We'll see if he roams after that clear, though. He sure does. Justin Zhang angling top side jungle. We don't see a ping coming out, though. 
from Jefferson City saying, hey, we got to back out of that. Maybe they instinctively knew or Chase just has a pretty good idea of what's happening. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it looks like at this point in the game, its lane might be over. <laughs> Again, getting pretty early on, the trading potential coming out from the Kled, played by Andrew Apostle of XQ in the top lane. He's not winning these fights any longer. And all the pressure going over to, to Rockbridge. Forces a teleport from Chase up in the top lane. Oh, but yeah, Justin Zhang getting caught out. Yeah, good collapse top by Jefferson side City. Jungle River. We hear claps from the audience again. It's the little victories that count. And that's what necessary. That's what you need to see, though. Uh, uh, Kali getting those kills. He needs to get ahead if he's ever going to kill Swain later on in this game. The sustain that comes out from that pick is crazy. To make an impact, Cameron Day's character, uh, Kali, who's a, a ninja assassin, uh, really does have to get ahead in the first 15 minutes. You, hopefully that kill will get her there. But meanwhile, Rockbridge High School angling to take their first tower of the game as they push towards bottom turret. Jeffrey does jump over and misses a few of his abilities, but they're they're still pretty safe out of this fight. We, are we do see Cameron now. Day roaming down bottom lane, hoping for an engage. Will we see an ultimate, ultimate coming, out, coming from out from DJ from Rice? Misses narrowly her route. And everyone gets out scot-free. Mm -hmm. I would have liked to have seen Ryan Wilkerson, DJ Rice, lead with his ultimate uh, longer range ability that can stun people in a kind of a small area of effect. But instead, he opts to use his E instead, which is a little bit shorter range. He can only reach one character. I think that, that's probably the, the scariest part about a Leona pick, is that they can set up those ganks so very well. Yes, quite the aggressive support in its right. Justin training blows with Cameron in the middle lane. Neither seeming really afraid of each other, not quite yet. as we see Jeffrey doing his classic invasion into the top red side, places a control ward, uh, which Vision, again, does grant uh, that much more knowledge in this game. You know exactly where your opponents are, which means you can either push the opposite side or capitalize on a, on a mismatch in numbers mm -hmm. across the map. And again, two kill lead over in favor of Rockbridge High School. One dragon being the Fire Drake. Very, very important. Up by about 3,000 gold. No towers yet. More exchanges coming in from the top lane. Chase and Andrew. So much damage coming out of Andrew at this point with his Phage and Tiamat item. Pressuring this lane as hard as he can. Clearing out any wards that he sees thanks to his control ward. Jumps in. Jeffrey Mullen uses his ultimate to push back. Cameron Day flashes out of it, but he will get kill secured by Justin Zhang. Beautiful gank coming in from Jeffrey, making that impact early and at the 15-minute mark. He is, he's transitioning his, uh, his pressure, not just in the jungle, but in the other lanes as well. Mm -hmm. Fantastic play coming out of Jeffrey. Yeah, standout performance this time around from the top side of the map. <laughs> we always mention the bot lane for Rockridge, but again, the other sides know how to handle themselves. Uh, this time pulling ahead, three assists going over to Jeffrey. Michael also has nearly a 30, actually it is a 30 plus CS differential against Jarek Kimball, who is playing Tristana tonight. They're, they're doing very well themselves, aggressively pushing in the wave, uh, applying pressure so that uh, Quinn Kempker might have to come down and, and not give that attention that's needed for top lane or mid lane. Rockbridge now taking the Rift Herald objective, which does grant uh, both the Empowered Recall as well as the, the Rift Herald itself, which you can summon to help uh, destroy some turret objectives along the way. So at this point in the game, Ben, what do you think is the key Ooh, teleport coming in from Justin Zhang as we get an engage three versus three in the bottom lane Michael securing two kills very good communication coming from Rockbridge High School as they now push down the bottom lane first tier turret yeah a counter engage there with the teleport we actually saw Quinn Kemker down there trying to find the engage oh Vex is about to get his scroll back oh misses Chase the really misses the ultimate He is currently out of mana, though, so likely no one's going to get any trades here. We will see, though. 
Chase trying to find a kill as well, roaming up to the top lane. Doesn't find it though. Three members of Rockbridge in the bot side, knocking on the door of the second tier bot tower. Yes, unsuccessful no gank from Cameron Day. Interesting to see the recall from Rockbridge High School. They could have angled either for more damage on the tier two tower or even the, even the uh, dragon. Ocean Drake, yeah. uh, which, you know, just these little micro calls are maybe asking for too much, but still fantastic play coming from Rockbridge High School, applying pressure where they need to, uh, communicating for these very good teleports coming in from Justin Zhang, uh, who, who is having a heyday with, or at least he's really enjoying the perks of being a Swain. <laughs> oh, for sure. He's going to come online here very soon. He picks up his second, his third item, and I don't know if Jefferson City will have the answer for it. Really going to come down to will they have this item? These items that have this ability that's called healing reduction. Uh, talk about sustain that Swain has. If you don't have any healing reduction items, you're not going to kill that Swain. Lane swap coming in for Rockbridge High School. They they've done this before. Get ahead early, swap the lanes, and apply pressure to the rest of the map. Uh, right after taking the bottom lane turret. Very textbook League of Legends play that we're seeing in our high school esports league mm -hmm. of all places. We're yeah. so happy to see real shot calling, real macro. That's something we got pretty used to in watching Rockbridge High School. We actually didn't see too many team fights until much later in the game. They Which just Jumper do their goes best. all in with his ultimate in this two versus four situation. Teleport does come in as Tarek, that would be Sean Yu, does come in as well with his ultimate. The cleanup crew is here though. Andrew with a beautiful teleport cleaning up whatever uh, initial engage they had. An overall three for zero trade in favor of Rockbridge High School now pushing a nine to one kill lead. Rift Herald does come up, meaning that the first tower of Jefferson City will go down. Rift Herald misses the tower, unfortunate, but he will have his second chance to redeem himself on tier two tower right now. Almost 20 minutes into this game, up eight kills, one dragon, and 10,000 gold. Uh, this game likely isn't going to last much longer. They've snowballed very, very well. And uh, honestly, Jefferson City probably won't have any answers to stall out this game. We talk about Wave Clear a lot. They don't have that special, special tool we talk about every single week, a Wave Clear that allowed them to stall out this game. So Rockbridge can pretty much dictate what towers they want to take and when with how strong they are right now. I'd say they do have a little bit of Wave Clear with Tristana and Olaf Axes, but at this point we talked about how their team and their champions that they picked needed to snowball early. That phase is over now, so it's going to be that much more difficult for Jefferson City to bounce back from this. Meanwhile, Rockbridge has a dynamite late game composition as well as they're picking off Ryan Wilkerson, DJ Rice, uh, missed ultimate from Jeffrey Galaxy Fox Mullen, but he does continue the charge. Very good root and knockback from Kill XL. Two kills after Jefferson City checks Dragon just to. Yeah, they're calling for the 20 minute Baron. Uh, Baron just spawned 15 seconds ago, and with those two kills, they're looking to secure it. Again. Really, really early. Yes, again, Baron objective. Once you destroy that, you get empowered recall uh, to get back to the fight that much quicker, as well as empowering all of your minions to charge and do that much more damage to the turrets around you. And with that, we're going to see here, Rockbridge does kind of have the position right now to kind of Side whether or not they're going to end this game. If they do find a couple more picks here with this Baron, they can easily push at least another inhibitor. And if they get enough kills, they could probably push and finish this game. With only one death, that's from uh, Justin Zhang in the mid lane. I'm sure he's kicking himself for being the only, only <laughs> death in lane. Uh, Rockbridge High School has a commanding lead over Jefferson City at this given time. We do see a engage coming in from Jefferson City on Andrew Apostle Vexcue, but he's so fed at this point that he can essentially two versus one the situation. It will turn into a three versus one situation, but it still seems like he's applying so much pressure. TP now coming in from, I believe, Justin in the mid lane while all of Jefferson City backs out of that situation saying, wait, we tried our best, but he did not go down yeah. at all. Well played by Andrew Apostle. Recently he was sick, actually, and wasn't sure if he was going to be able to play today, but here he is tonight having a standout performance. It doesn't kill you, makes you stronger as he recovers from his immunities and is now <laughs> three kills, zero deaths, and two assists. 156 CS in this game. 
Uh, with a little help from Jeffrey, let's not forget that. He yeah. had a fantastic gank. I think in this More league, there's... Ooh, ooh very great pickup well. by Michael. <laughs> uh, meanwhile, the, the Sean Yu on Tarek finds an opportunity to stun, uh, trigger the flash and ultimate from enemy jungler Quinn Kempker. As Rockbridge continues their assault on Jefferson City's base as well as their turrets, they've got so much pressure on this map and can be in so many places at any given time. Jefferson City trying to turtle in right now, holding on to dear life as maybe they can hold out for the late game to find their items to fight. We do see Justin and Andrew up in the mid lane. Waddle Dash going in for a charge, it's but right. Sean quickly ulting in response. Doesn't, doesn't die at all, Michael. XM finds one kill. Yeah, I saw what they were trying to do there. Multiple members of Rockbridge were split across the map there. They're trying to find a quick engage, uh, try to force the matchups here and there, maybe have a numbers advantage. But it looks like that that's, uh, that engage failed. Rockbridge is able to reconverge very, very quickly and turn the fight back in favor of them. Waddle Rush being the last man standing. Most likely like, the right call in that yeah. situation. But that since Probably the last Rockbridge was so effort. far ahead, uh, not much could be done. Oh, and they're going for the complete dive on Chase Ruiz. Waddle Rush, he survives. But Rockbridge does pick up their fifth win of the season, sitting now at a 5-1 and one record. Uh, Jefferson City, again, that... Honestly, in that composition, it would have looked like right there. There wasn't a lot they could do from the beginning. And again, more of like a composition issue, I think. They lost pretty early on. Great pressure from Jeffrey. Good rotations all around. And uh, Rockbridge looking as controlling as ever with a bounce back win uh, coming yeah. off their loss to Hickman last week. Yeah. Shout out to uh, the bottom lane. Uh, that would be Michael and Sean. Sean actually finished four kills, zero deaths, and seven assists, more than the top laner. Yeah, a 909 <laughs> bot lane. Uh, uh, <laughs> scary stuff that you just don't want to see uh, when it comes to League of Legends. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but that, though, that wraps up the Wednesday, our first first day of games for the sixth week of the Yukatsu High That's School right. Esports League. Uh, brought to you guys, of course, by Columbia College, Armstrong Teasdale, Veterans United, and Hawthorne Bank. Thank you guys for tuning in. Uh, quick bunch of games tonight, and we'll be tuning in on Friday for the games between Hickman High School and Battle. Yeah. We'll see you then. Thanks for watching. We're signing out.